Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Classroom. To get started, we'll go to classroom.google.com. When you first sign in, you will see this pop up if you have PowerSchool classes. You can choose a class to import from PowerSchool automatically. You'll wait for the screen to load and your students will simply choose to join the class on their account. If you get a new student in the middle of the year, you can use this button and choose Import from SIS to sync the new information. If you are a specialist teacher or a teacher without PowerSchool classes who prefers to create one manually, you will follow these steps. We'll create a new class by going to this plus sign and we're going to create class. Enter the class name and the other fields are optional. I'm going to click create. Next up, I can customize my header here by clicking this button. You can choose a color, you can change the header photo, or upload your own photo. We can add co-teachers here by going to people. We click the plus next to this teacher's heading. And we can type the name of a colleague to invite them. When they accept the invitation, their name will be bolded here, and that's how I'll know that they are successfully added as a co-teacher. There's a few ways that we can add students. The first is to click here where it says class code. You can make it larger, and your students can go to classroom.google.com. They would click the plus sign, and they can type the code here to join your class. Or you could click this button to copy the link and send it to them. Or in the People tab, you can scroll down to Students, and you can click the plus and add the student similar to how we did for the co-teachers. If you do it this way, you'll instruct the student to click Join on their classroom dashboard, just like this. There is also a new feature to put students into groups. Once we have added our students, you can invite their guardians by clicking this button. You invite them the same way we did before, where you type the email and click invite. The key is that the guardian has to accept your invitation, and then you'll see their email will be added here. It'll look something like this. Guardians will preview your classwork page, and they'll get sent email summaries about their students' work in class. They'll only be able to see information about their own student, not the entire class. In the Classwork tab, you can click Create, and you have a couple options to choose from. The first one is just a regular assignment. In the assignment, you would choose a title, instructions, you can also attach several types of files here. You can use add-ons, which allow you to pull from some of our approved online resources. You would choose the class, all students or just specific students, due date and time, which is optional. You could also close submissions after the due date. Topics, which we'll get to later, and some different grading options as well if you choose, or it could be ungraded. For older students, you can also check this box, which will check their writing for plagiarism. Once you're ready, you can either assign right away, or use this drop-down to schedule, save draft, or discard. If we go back to the Create button, we can also create an assignment with Kami. Here we would fill out the title and instructions, we can choose from these different options, including the Kami library. You can click the drop down and choose if you want to make a copy for each student, if students share just one copy between all of them, or if this is read only and students cannot edit the file, you'll probably go with the first option most of the time like this.
Feature control allows you to choose which features students have access to. You can choose to send Kami instructions to students and choose to use the Google Classroom add-on. Once you've made all your preferences here, you can choose to assign it later or assign right away. If you choose quiz assignment, this is what it'll look like. You'll create a Google form, just like this one, and the results from this Google form will be entered into the Google Classroom grade. You can choose to have locked mode turned on or off for Chromebooks. What this means is that students will not be able to open other tabs or applications while taking this quiz. This is turned on to import the grades. And once you've filled out all the other details, you would click assign at the top. When students complete assignments, it'll always look something like this. If you have an attachment, the students can click it. It'll open in another tab. They also have the option to add or create a file from scratch. Alternatively, they could also add a link here. They can add a comment. They can also add a private comment to just you. And when they mark it as done, that's where the assignment will be submitted. When you choose to assign a question to students, this is what it looks like from their side. Students will type their response and click Turn In. They can also see their classmates' answers and write replies. When your students submit an assignment, it'll look like this. You can click Review Work. It'll take you through each student's submission. And you can use these arrows at the top to go to the next student's work. Here is where you'll enter a grade. You can also click this button to expand the document and open it in a new window. You can also add a private comment. If you find yourself uh, using the same comments over and over, you can also create what's called a comment bank. So that way you can create a bank of different comments like great job or you know, you forgot this or that, and then you can reuse those same comments with multiple submissions. Once I'm done, I click post and I return. You can also return multiple submissions with this drop down. Now you'll notice that graded has a one because I just graded that student's work. If we go to the grades tab, you can also view all the assignments and the students' grades. You can even filter here. If you choose to create a material, this will act as a way to share files and different items with your students that they need for projects. It's not necessarily an assignment, but it's a way for them to view, in this case, a PDF. You can also choose to reuse an assignment for example, I'm pretending like I have a weekly check-in for my students, and rather than me having to create this from scratch every single time, I can reuse the bones of this and just edit a few things uh, to post every single week. So in this case, I have my information. I chose to make a copy for each student so that way they don't alter my original. I'm going to assign. Now, when I click create the next week, I can reuse post. You would choose the class and the assignment. Click reuse. Maybe here I change the date. And then I can just assign it again, really easy. We can organize by going to create and topic. This will allow us to create different sections in the classwork tab so that way it's much easier for our students to find assignments. So I've created these two topics below. I can click an assignment 
and drag it where I want it to be. All right, that is much better. Now we have things organized by subject, or you could do it by project title, or really anything you want. Going back to the home page, this is called the stream. You'll notice as I've been creating assignments, they appear in the stream as just a real easy way for kids to find the most recent activity. I can also very quickly share a link or a comment with students right here through posting a comment. I can specify which class it goes to, if it goes to all students or just individual ones. So you can choose from the options here. You can schedule it or post it. You and your students can also reply to this comment. And students can write their own comments too. If we go to the gear, we can scroll to stream and classwork. And here you can actually specify if you'd prefer to have students comment or only the teacher. It might be a nice way for students to practice good digital citizenship if you have comments on and encourage them to be respectful of one another. But if you feel more comfortable and you feel like it's better for your class, you can also just turn them off so that way only the teacher can make posts or comments. And don't forget to hit save. Another option you can choose to turn on or off is guardian access. So we mentioned before how guardians receive those summary emails and they can view the classwork tab. You can choose to turn that off if you want. At the bottom, you can also get very granular with grading, such as creating grading periods, a grading scale, even draft grade for missing assignments, grade calculation and grade categories, but it's not required for you to get that specific. Just a little side note, if you're using add-ons for either a comment or an assignment in the classwork tab, just make sure that you have pop-ups enabled or else it may not open up correctly. We typically don't use Google Meet links with students since the pandemic. However, if we did have an e-learning day where we had to have a Google Meet, you would click this button to generate. And now when students need it, they click join and they can join a Google Meet right from here. You would not want to create a Google Calendar invite for them. This is the proper way to set it up just through Google Classroom. Now we'll cover some really cool new features. If we go to the resources page here, you'll notice you can create a new practice set or a new video activity. Practice sets allow you to create questions that are short answer, paragraph, single select, or multi-select questions. And the really cool thing is that you can include extra help and you can have hints or clues pop up as your student answers questions. Or you can even have a recommended video to guide your student through the concept as they answer these questions. You can import an existing Google form to get questions, or you can create them from scratch and assign this practice set to students. Video activities are very similar to Edpuzzle, where you can insert questions in the middle of videos, so that way it'll pause the video at that point and ask the student a question. When students reach a question, the video pauses and looks something like this, where the student has to select the answers. The next feature that's super cool and brand new is the Share Classwork button. If I have assignments that I would love to share with another teacher so they can copy the assignment to their own Google Classroom, I can use this button. Once you turn it on, you can copy. And then when the teacher clicks your link, it'll look like this. For them, they'll be able to check the assignments they want and they can export the assignments to their own classroom. And finally, the last tip I'll give you is that you'll want to archive your Google Classroom at the end of the trimester or the end of the school year. To do that, you're going to hit the three dots and choose archive. You can always unarchive it if you make a mistake. You can find your archived classes at the bottom of this side menu. 
The reason why we want to archive classes when they're no longer needed is so that old information is no longer syncing to other websites. And also, that way we can prevent students from turning an old class into an unmonitored chat room where they're commenting back and forth. And it just helps to kind of declutter uh, the dashboard for both your students and you so old, irrelevant classes are no longer showing up. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss our next video.